What is up, everybody? What's up with anybody right now? Um, today, we are going to be talking about the three things that I've been doing to keep myself sane during quarantine, self-isolation, just the pandemic. What is quarantine now? Can, can quarantine be five months long? You know, it's, it is what it is. But uh, please stay tuned to hear my ramblings about three uh, points that I have been trying to keep up with in these ever so trying times. Plus a nice little bonus because what is planning? Just kind of threw it in there at the end. Stop my prior to video, video ramblings starting now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Well, I have not been back here in a while, and honestly, I think it's just what many of us are going through right now with, can we even call it quarantine? I feel like um, I have this conversation with friends of mine every day when it comes to the pandemic and everything that's happening, and honestly, we've all kind of come down to the same point of almost feeling like we are being gaslit, we are being gaslighted, um, whatever the past tense, can't even call it past tense, it's happening currently, but it feels like we all know that there's something wrong going on, but everybody around us doesn't seem to be taking it seriously, be it uh, our family, some of our friends even, people our age who I used to think knew better than to act how they're acting. Um, it is just really, really worrisome. Um, I, I really try to not focus on things being problematic or worrisome, but lately that feels like the only thing that we can even talk about is a neurotic crazy government that isn't doing anything for us, a pandemic that other parts of the world seem to have under control, or at least they're properly managing it. A friend of mine recently, she was able to somehow make it to Lithuania, where she's a teacher, or will be a teacher, and she was talking about how they're planning on cracking down and reinforcing a lot of their uh, policies that they had early on with everything happening. Uh, because they saw a spike in cases. A spike in cases there is eight people. So in Lithuania, a former spike of eight people. Here in Arizona, I'm just south of Phoenix, and a spike here is, is, is like, what, how many thousands of people every single day? And that's not a spike, that's, that's normal. Even in, in Arizona, we, we aren't mandating masks, it's it is sort of up to various places on, on what they want to do. It's They don't have to do anything, but they strongly urge you to. It's... It's irritating. Um, it is hard to not feel... It is hard to not feel almost hopeless, but we can't feel hopeless, especially now I feel. It's, we are now less than 100 days to the next election, and I personally honestly think that although neither of the options that we have right now are what I would personally choose between, there is one person obviously that is, is, much, much, much better suited for the task that we are currently going through than the other who has completely failed us. Um, and so that's just kind of the rallying cry of, 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 of hope right now, I think, for many of us. But um, as a way to kind of not so much distract myself from it, but try to keep my hopes up in despite of what's going on, I have been... Um, 
trying to do more personal growth for myself, I suppose, lately. So uh, at the start of um, the pandemic, I should say now, it's it's can't even call it a quarantine because like the three of us who are still quarantined. Um, but at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, I had stated this in, in a past video, but how I was so how I was supposed to move to China in February, but then, you know, all of this kind of closed their borders in March, um, and here I am still. But, uh, no, in, in spite of everything going on, I've, I've been trying to just kind of focus on bettering myself through a lot of this. So what that's kind of entailed for me, um, I would say that there are three things that I've really been focusing on um, in terms of helping myself through all of this. It's as, as hopeless as everything is ha happening around me right now. Um, one piece of advice that I, I've, I've kind of always liked and kind of stuck to is, although I can't do anything about the factors that are happening to me, I can... 100% control how I feel about what's happening and how I react to what's happening. So do I like that there is a global pandemic happening right now that is forcing me to be kept here in my grandparents' house um, now during the year that that was so now during the year that was finally supposed to be the big takeoff point for me and, and for many people um that's that's obviously not where I had planned on being right now, but it is where I am, so uh, for now at least, these three things are sort of what I have been focusing on. First thing I've been focusing on is personal health, and, and I suppose sort of all of these tie into that, but, but the main thing that I'm talking about with health in this instance is uh, nutrition, and exercise and each of these kind of plays into um, two of the things that I'm doing so I'll talk about uh, each of those two as, as two separate points so the first part of uh, my health that I've been focusing on is the exercise portion of that now here again southern Arizona it is really really hot even now it's it's earlier in the morning and it just gets so hot so fast, um, passes 100 before noon, um, so love that. It has been nearing 110 daily. So there isn't too much you can do outside, out and about with everything closed. Um, Southern Arizona isn't known for our trees, so you're at a lack of, 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 of shade. So you spend a lot of time indoors. So despite that, I've been trying to keep myself active by heading out at night, going for nightly walks, nightly runs if I'm feeling up to it, head over to the park, work on pull-ups, things like that. Um, just trying to make sure that I keep active. Um, so th that is probably one of the bigger points that's, that's helping to keep my mind focused on something else, helping to keep refreshed I suppose um, the second thing I've sort of been working on is um, I definitely buy into the whole self-help self, -help, self um, uh, motivation I, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to call anything self-help I suppose in that that sounds like like uh, it's is it really self-help if, if, if you're looking to others for that help? So it's, it's, it is self-help in the regard that I myself am looking for the help, but um, I am very, very thankful for all of the authors of the various audiobooks that I've been listening to on said walks and runs that I just discussed. Um, so yeah, point two here is um, just reading, taking in information. Um, I am personally not one who likes to just sit down and and read in that sense. I, 
I really, really like audiobooks. Um, I recently just finished the audiobook, um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, and really vibed with that one. It's It, it just really talks about, um, well, a point that I've, I've uh, already discussed in this video um, of I can't choose what happens to me, but I can choose um, what I do after that. I can choose how I react to that. That's in there, is, is sort of choosing what you give a fuck about. So I can't do anything about my cat. He's one. Um, I can't do anything about, say, the pandemic, the virus personally, but I can choose what I am doing as a result. So what I'm doing as, as a result are these three points that I'm talking about, for example. Um, so that's what I'm choosing to give a fuck about, is what I can personally do myself to properly uh, combat what's going on in my own small way to myself. Um, and that helps to sort of return some of the power that I feel like a lot of us uh, feel like we no longer have at this point. A book that I kind of just hopped into recently, it is called The Secret, and I'm not too entirely sure how I feel about that one yet. Um, it kind of seems very up in the air, spiritual, all of that hyper guru type of stuff, but um, I figure that if it's working for some people, it can work for me. So uh, I am listening to that one just kind of casually on my walks. Um, and mainly what that one's talking about is what you think about, what you perceive as true is true. So uh, for example, it's, it's decide on something that you want. So um, one thing that I've been really kind of focused on is is I want to head to China to my job as soon as I can um, I want everything with this pandemic to be figured out and and corrected I want the virus gone as soon as can be physically possible uh, so that's what my mindset has has been on a lot so it's it's decide on something that you want and then kind of imagine that it's already yours imagine that it's already happened that you're already in the world that what you want has been achieved because it kind of plays off of the whole time doesn't exist um, everything that's ever happened and never will happen is happening now as time isn't a thing so it's the world we want to live in we already do we just have to put ourselves mentally there so it's it's decide what you want imagine it is already there believe it's already there and then just allow it to come to you. So it, it, it plays off of the mindset of, for example, when we order something online, we don't order it then five minutes later be like, well, actually it isn't here yet. So did I order it? Did I, maybe I should order it a second time, right? So we go back online and, and, and we order it again and again and again and, and again until it finally arrives. And then we're like, wait, uh oh, this is bad. And then it just keeps on arriving because we ordered like 200 because we didn't trust the process. We didn't trust that what we know is going to happen will happen. So it is just kind of seeing what I want and what I've already put out into the universe of, of me wanting. I want to be in China. I want the pandemic uh, to be gone. Um, those are the, the positive affirmative things that I want. Um, then it, it, it just kind of allows the universe to correct itself into having those things happen. Uh, so it's, I've already placed the order, now I'm just waiting for the transaction to be carried out, right? For the product to be shipped to me. Um, so we just have to allow the process to happen, which at this point works because what else can I even do about anything other than uh, what I have been talking about? So. Um, yeah, exercise, self-help, if you can call it that, and then moving on to three is a really big thing that I think just about everybody kind of struggles with to a certain degree or has at some point struggled with to a certain degree is nutrition. 
Now, there are how many different diet plans, different different fasting techniques, different anything you can think of, right? There are cleanses and flushes and fasts and fads and paleo, keto, vegetarian, vegan, like what should I do? What, what nutritional plan should I go with? Um, a nutritional plan that I, um, or not, not even so much plan, right? It's, it's, it's a lifestyle. You shouldn't see anything as a diet because a diet is just the food you eat. That is by definition, just what a diet is. So you have to decide that your diet, what you eat works for you, um, that you're not working for it. I suppose. Um, so what I hopped into at the beginning of the year, I had been putting it off for so long, even though I knew in my heart that it 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 is right, not only ethically, morally, but um, just globally and, and on a health standpoint makes the most sense, is I went plant-based at the beginning of the year, um, but then once I got here and I... Um, ended up living here with my grandparents for uh, going on five months, past five months now. Um, I decided that sort of in, in all of our best interest. Um, I knew that they weren't ones to change through all of this and just for a time to kind of cut back on expenses. I swapped into um, eating with them that allowed us to sort of work together better when it came to meal planning and all of that but just the more that I learn the more that I know about um, one just the health benefits of being vegan but also just what eating meat means just on a global standpoint I it it just wasn't something I could ethically continue on with and so I think that that is a main reason to be plant-based plant-based or to be vegan right is because not only is it a lifestyle choice in terms of your health but also everybody else's um when we look at what veganism kind of helps to push back up against is just about everything out there right i i was just having this conversation with a friend of mine about how I personally believe that the animal agriculture business so heavily ties into just about every single wrong that is happening in the world right now, be it um, the healthcare industry here in the United States um, with uh, large corporations and big pharma and all of the money that is in keeping people sick not not necessarily letting them die quick, but letting them die a slow death, right? So it it is keeping them alive, but they aren't living a good life, right? Like the medications out there aren't aren't giving people a better quality of life per se. It is just helping to put a band-aid on a wound you keep on inflicting every single day. So that would be like if I were to stab myself in the chest, go to the hospital, have them sew me up, go back home, stab myself in the chest, go to the hospital and, and repeat the cycle every single day until finally they can't do anything about my stab wound that I keep on doing. And it just keeps on getting worse and worse until I do effectively kill myself um, is, is what's happening when you continue to put in all of these toxins that, that, uh, meat and animal products put into you, right? Um, and, and not just that, but uh, processed foods in general on top of that. So whole foods, plant-based, I um, have been back on this for about a week now, and I'm right back to how I felt prior to all of this in terms of just, I feel clean again. Um, when I went back to eating meat, I always had this, this feeling like I had to constantly clear my throat and it just drove me insane. And I really haven't been having that issue now for the past few days. Um, and I think a lot of that does have to do with, especially dairy. Um, 
I don't necessarily think I'm lactose intolerant and that I can't have any of it. I like to think of it as lactose ambivalent. Like I am very aware I shouldn't have it. And um, for a long time, I just kind of lived with that. That is the ambivalence in all of that. But I am past that. I'm past um, forgoing my health for momentary satisfaction, right? That is what it all comes down to, is anybody who argues, oh, I could never be vegan, I like meat too much, I like the flavor, um, it's, they're effectively saying, I care more about, um, I, I care more about the flavor of my food for tops a minute, because nobody chews for as long as they should be, right? Food nowadays is made to be soft, that's why Many people, their teeth end up not growing in straight is because our jaws don't form at a younger age because we just aren't eating the foods that we used to eat. We aren't eating the harder foods that we have to chew a lot. It is just soft. So our jaws don't form correctly as they should be. Our teeth don't grow in correctly. Thus, uh, braces and all of that being necessary. That's just kind of um, more of the negatives associated with... Uh, with choosing temporary taste, temporary pleasure over um, just everything. Ethics, morals, compassion, how we say that how an animal tastes is more important than the life of the animal. Um, how we're saying that temporary taste is more important than the rainforest, more important than uh, clean water, more important than water in general, right? Because we already know that half of our fresh water supply goes towards uh, animal agriculture, be it the animals themselves or um, or the fact that 80% of our cropland goes towards uh, growing foods just to feed the, the animals in animal agriculture. So all of that water, not to mention all of the water being contaminated from the excrement of these billions of animals that we slaughter every single year, right? Um, so it's 80% it's of land used for crops, 80% of that goes to feed animals. So it's, it's when we're looking at this from, from an economics point of view even, right? Because that seems to be all our government seems to care about is money. Is that not such, such a tiny return on investment in terms of the amount of resources that go into producing meat and then how they continue to push meat as, as a necessity, how they continue to push animal products in general as a necessity, what else do they have to gain by doing that? They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't push meat and animal products on us with such a, a small return on investment with the amount of resources going in unless they were earning their money somewhere else. Now, where is that? They earn that money somewhere else in the amount of what we pay to large pharmaceutical, large pharmaceutical companies, right? So um, it's big pharma makes billions upon billions of dollars off of just the backs of sick people every single year. I'm sure that if, if we really wanted to, we could have a cure for all of these cancers. What I'm talking about basically is a cure for all of these cancers, all of these diseases, in that a vegan diet is the only diet out there that has proven to not only stop the effects of heart disease and, and some forms of cancer and high cholesterol and hypertension and high uh, triglyceroids and blood pressure, just everything, blood glucose, all of those not only stop it but reverse it. It is the only diet out there that does all of that. So we already have an effective answer to all of that, but we aren't getting the information we need on all of this. Now, why? It is because there's so much money in keeping people sick. There's so much money. The amount of money that they earn from people continuing to be sick is so much that it more than makes up for the amount of all of the resources that go into one cow, one chicken, one animal that we raise for a few years, treat terribly, and then slaughter it just so that way we can have a $1 cheeseburger in a drive through right? Um, it's, it's, 
it is all just so that way the large pharmaceutical companies can make as much money as as as, as they possibly can and so no i think that that's been just where a lot of my attention lately has been on is just overall I'm not sure that I can even call it anger, right? Because anger, it really doesn't even do how I feel towards this justice. It isn't just that I am upset that um, that the rich and powerful are taking advantage of, 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 of people who not only don't know any better, but also don't have the the proper resources to fix it even if they wanted to what like like 23,000 Americans live in what is defined as a food desert meaning that they live i forget how many miles away from a grocery store so so it's there are 23 million Americans who even if they wanted to be healthy the closest thing to them is a convenience store and we all know here in the United States our convenience stores aren't aren't top tier gourmet nutrition right is a bag of hot cheetos and a cold red mountain dew and you're out of there like that's that's not top tier diet that's not top tier nutrition but that's all that 23 million americans have access to so it's there's a lot of money in keeping people fat and unhealthy and i personally just don't plan on buying into it anymore but even past that it's it's i want to do everything I can, everything in my power to to help to push back against all of that, right? To help push back against just the misinformation that's out there. Um, so that's, that's definitely been occupying a lot of my mind, a lot of my time, a lot of my thoughts, just everything, learning everything that I can, talking with friends who in some instances don't even agree with me, right? Like I went to school, I have my degrees in biology, environmental science, biotechnology, organismal biology, right? Like that's that's what I studied. Um, so it's, it's I have many, many friends who also studied what I studied. And, and in all of that, in environmental sciences, right? We learn, okay, all about deforestation, how bad that is, climate change, how, how bad all of the cars are, but it took me graduating and then doing my own outside external resource research to really start to figure out that um, we missed out not only a large but possibly what I now believe to be the largest issue of of environmental degradation being animal agriculture. Right, it is the cause of so much uh, contamina contamination. Pollute, pollution in our fresh water supply uses up so much resource, uh, be it, again, the water, the land usage, our cropland. Um, so it's, it's, it takes from all of that and then past that because there isn't enough land I, with, with what we already have, the demand for meat just keeps on going up higher and higher and higher, that that is also then what causes... Um, the extra deforestation of the rainforest, right? When I was in school, the, the talk, if anything, was on palm oil, right? How we needed to get away from palm oil. It, if we need to fix the planet, get rid of palm oil. Um, but that's, that's only a portion of what's happening, right? Like, the forests aren't being cut down so that way we can grow palms. Like, that is an issue, but... I would argue that it's not even close to the largest issue with deforestation. The main reason that forests are cut down, are burned down, are are completely torn apart isn't so that way we can necessarily monocrop, which is an issue. Um, it is so that way we can go in with animal agriculture, so we have more room for livestock, so that way we have more room for all of these animals that are being raised just to be slaughtered because people think that a huge slab of meat is what's going to do it for them. Um, and it is just ridiculous. Um, animal agriculture also accounts for 51%, um, probably even more now, but uh, last thing that I had read was 51% of total emissions, so greenhouse gases, 51% of that comes from animal agriculture. 
and what are we doing? We aren't doing anything. We definitely aren't doing enough. We aren't... No, I, I plan on devoting a bunch of future videos on that. I, I, if nothing else, need to just put my thoughts out there, put information out there on what is happening um, as, as I hear it, as, as I learn about it, um, as it comes to me, I want to put it out there so that way the information is already out there, but just the more it's talked about, the more awareness is raised, the more other people keep on talking about it. It is like the reverse of a pyramid scheme because other than, or rather than trying to sell, you know, doTERRA essential oils, now we are actually doing something good, something that means anything. Um, putting proper information out there to help save lives. Um, so, plan on making a lot of videos coming up um, on just, not just my thoughts on, on what's happening, but just more research about what's happening. One extra point that I am going to add, um, as I suppose a fourth bonus thing that I've been up to, is I'm trying to get back into all of my language learning efforts, processes that I used to be really, really strongly uh, associated with, I used to care a lot about. I have studied nine-ish languages now. Um, that's not to say that I'm fluent in nine-ish languages now, but I have studied them and I just really love languages. And so that's been another nice outlet um, lately that I've been using to, again, not distract myself, but just help me focus on something else, is languages. So, um, languages that I have been working on lately, I am always continuing to work on my Chinese. I, um, I, I started learning that back in college. It was actually probably the main thing that kept me going to college. Um, there was a long period of time where I wasn't even sure if I wanted to continue with it. But I kept on trucking and graduated, and I think I do have um, my Chinese classes, my Chinese teacher to thank for all of that. I don't think that I would have kept going to school if I hadn't have found that one class that really did it for me, that, that helped to keep me interested in showing up. So it started out with that, but then I ended up getting my certification in Chinese, went to China to study abroad um, for a few of my... Chinese course, or for a few of my Chinese credits, and uh, yeah, I, I've just been studying Chinese a lot more lately, more so focusing on, on the speaking and, and the listening portions, um, but on top of that, I realized that I really did just need to um, kind of re-diversify. I wasn't able to keep myself as interested, as invested in Chinese as, as I used to be. And I think a lot of that is because in the past, there were times when I would be not only trying to study Chinese, but maybe I was also studying Japanese. I was also uh, trying to have various conversations in Korean or um, helping to focus on my Spanish when I was an ESL teacher um, up in South Dakota um, because a lot of my students spoke Spanish and I wanted to help them by being a better teacher by um, kind of, if, if, if I understand their language better, then I can help teach them my language better, I thought. Um, so just throughout any other time that I was learning a language, I was never only learning one language. I, I kept it interesting. And that was my issue, is I wasn't keeping it interesting anymore with Chinese. So I watched a video yesterday, actually, which inspired me to start learning Swedish and German at the same time. I have taken German classes in the past, um, and just being uh, German-American, I suppose, um, there is a lot of German influence that I've just sort of grown up with. So I really like that I already have that going into this, but um, when I was doing research, I found that German and Chinese are actually relatively similar in many respects. So um, so I started learning both of those together, and I think that what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start doing kind of short videos on um, my progression of learning these three languages now, just sort of from where I am now. Um, 
So I'll just make the videos in those languages and I suppose just have different uh, like in channels of that happening. We'll make it a variety channel yet. So now between various exercises and health to vegan plant-based activism and helping to get information out and then language learning processes. I think I'm pretty well diversified now. What do you think? Well, I think that I have rambled on for, I don't even know how long this video is going to be. I think I'm just going to throw it all together and go with it because I like raw feeling videos. The ones that are really highly produced, I feel like um, if there is a YouTuber that that has more more open videos, more uh, content that feels just really raw and rough. They almost feel more um, more accessible, more like like personable. Like here, um, I feel like like I'm actually sitting across the table from you, um, and and I think that in this context, it also kind of feels like you're sitting right across the table right now from me as well, um, which is something that I really like. I like that in a YouTuber and a vlogger in, in any setting is feeling like it is just a conversation between friends, between people who are trying to at the very least understand each other. Um, so I think I'll try to keep a lot of my videos in the raw kind of format. I like the personal touch of it, I guess. Uh, but no, um, if anybody passed the like three friends of mine who actually follow and check out these videos when I throw them up um, ends up watching this and wants to comment or even those three friends of mine who feel the need to uh, like comment on any of this sort of let me know um, with anything that I've talked about um, what you guys would want to see. I have also thought about doing sort of like a book club type of thing where um, I put up like, okay, for next week I am going to have um, whatever book read and then talk about it in a video that upcoming week and be like, this is our book club. Um, if anything, these times have, have me even just wanting to join a book club. I just want to be out of this house sometimes. So I think that, that maybe just a nice casual book club could be fun too. But no, like a book club, <laughs> vegan activism, videos in Swedish, German, Chinese, it's anything out there, just make content, put it out there. We'll see where, where any of that goes. So um, as will eventually be always, uh, if you liked anything that I said in this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the uh, notification if you uh, want to be notified every three years when I put up a new video. Um, kidding, I'm hoping that I'll be better about this starting now. Um, and please make it a point to do any of that. Love to hear from anybody. It helps to keep me motivated, uh, knowing that people actually watch any of this. And yeah, 